My name is Tess and I'm from Vet One. So Vet One is an equipment, products and consumables company located here on the Gold Coast. And what I'm going to be doing with Vet One is producing a whole bunch of content, videos, resources, kind of everything in between to help vets, vet nurses, students, anyone that's working in a vet clinic be able to use any kind of equipment that comes into their clinic or they've had for a while, use it to the best of its ability. So I'm gonna start off with dentistry. So I'm gonna start with dental hand pieces and just basically getting to know what they're for, what they're called and how to use them. If you go to the link down the bottom of the page, it takes you to our website. You can download a downloadable PDF which has a instrument guide and it's also got a dental charting guide which is really really important um, and it's nice and modern and neat and just easy to use I've got Max here to help me out and we're just gonna go through like a basic dental kit so to start there's always kind of a basic extraction forcep and then there's different variants of that. so there's a standard one and then you've got a right angled one which is handy for teeth that are at the back of the jaw or just really difficult for the vet to kind of get to no two dogs or cats are ever the same so some jaws can be a little bit more difficult than others so these can come in handy when the teeth the tooth or the fragment that's there that they're trying to remove is a little bit harder to get to that you're not going to be able to get with a standard extraction faucet next variant is a fragment extraction faucet and the vets will usually go to grab one of these if they have sectioned a tooth and they've got multiple pieces of tooth that they need to kind of remove that are difficult to get to or a tiny delicate tooth or if a patient has come in with a broken tooth now we're moving on to scalers so you've usually got an ultrasonic scaler which you'll use but there's also a range of hand held scalers so this is a sickle scaler it has a pointed tip and it's used to kind of remove tartar and calculus that build up on the teeth over time. And there's other kind of different variants of scalar. So this is a tartar scalar. The surface area on this one is a little bit different. It's a little bit wider. So you would use these for different type of teeth. The sickle and the tartar scalar are for the surface of the tooth. And then you've got another type of scalar, which is a periodontal scalar. These are used for in and around the gum and the structure of the tooth. So with this one, the point on the end is not as sharp, it's a blunt edge because you don't want to damage those structures around the teeth and you don't want kind of excess bleeding where it doesn't need to kind of occur. When it comes to doing dental procedures and having different kind of instruments and different variants, I would always recommend being over prepared. The last thing you want to do is, you know, you've started a dental procedure and the vet goes, where's this instrument? You're rushing through cupboards and whatnot. I would generally always have everything that you could possibly think you might need have it out ready to go and within arm's reach now the similar kind of instrument this is probably the one that the vet will ask for first it's the probe as soon as the dog is anesthetized intubated and settling under anesthetic this instrument is used to kind of probe around each tooth and check for pockets and cavities and kind of suspicious teeth one end has a bit of a hook so that would be used for teeth at the back of the mouth that are difficult to get to or if it's just on a weird angle and this end has got a bit of a measurement which kind of helps indicate to the vet how big a pocket or a cavity is and whether they should extract the tooth monitor the tooth or leave the tooth in place from this the vet will usually say mark on your dental chart we want to monitor that one we want to remove that one and make a bit of a plan for that dental procedure the other thing that this will indicate is whether the patient's going to need dental x-rays as well so that's another thing i would definitely have prepared before you even start the procedure the next kind of really commonly used instrument is a luxator so these come in a bunch of different sizes and the sizes would depend on what kind of tooth the vet is working on so if the tooth isn't wobbly, this is what we're going to use to kind of break down the periodontal ligament around the tooth prior to extraction. It's a thin, sharp type of instrument. It's got a little bit of a spoon on it just to kind of hook in around the teeth. So this one you would use for a back tooth, maybe like a molar, this one kind of creeping towards the front. And then this one is like a teeny tiny small one, which I would use for like, it would probably get used for like a cat incisor. So cat incisors are tiny, so you need tiny instruments. So depending on the patient that you're working on would determine which ones you might have out ready to go for the vet to use. The next one, very similar, and people do, and even I get these mixed up constantly, is a elevator. So a winged elevator. So you've got Luxators, then you've got winged elevators. I've heard them get called like 
escalators and anything in between but it's kind of funny because everyone kind of knows what you're talking about so <laughs> these are a winged elevator so you can see that it's got a bit of a wing tip on it once you've used the luxator to break down the ligaments around the tooth this is what we're going to do to elevate the tooth out of the mouth the vet will lightly kind of shift in around the tooth and carefully lift and loosen the tooth ready for extraction with this motion sometimes the tooth will just pop out but if not you might need to go back and grab your extraction faucet the main differences i guess is that with the winged elevator it's got more of a scoop surface that extends around into a barrel whereas with the luxator it's a lot more flat you will also need to sharpen these quite frequently as well because a blunt instrument makes the job so much harder so make sure you're keeping up to date with sharpening your dental instruments these also come in like a whole bunch of colors which is just so much fun the next instrument is dental burrs so if your vet is removing teeth and they need to section a tooth maybe it's a three rooted or a tooth two rooted tooth that needs sectioning prior to removing they will go to grab the burrs these come in a whole bunch of different sizes and also shapes you have the straighter kind of drill pieces which are used commonly for sectioning the tooth and then you've got the rounder type of burrs which are generally used to kind of smooth and burr away at the bone they can also be used to create a moat around a tooth root fragment prior to extraction having a whole bunch of these on hand is going to make your life way easier you can also store them in a little holder like this which is autoclavable so you can literally just shut this and chuck it in the autoclave and keeping them all in hand because sometimes when you put them in an autoclavable bag they do get lost and you know a week later you'll find them in the bottom of the dental table or on the floor under the so keeping them in a little holder like this is super important another one that's going to make your life way easier is a dental headlamp so lots of clinics will have you know roof mounted lighting all that kind of thing which is great but in a dog's mouth it can be very very difficult to kind of pinpoint that light exactly where you need to see it that's where a headlight like this comes in handy and it makes your life so much easier and it's just going to fasten up the process of that anesthetic as well if you can just focus on the tooth you've got perfect lighting you can work at it a lot quicker and kind of get in and get out a lot nicer I think these are really underutilized and like not used enough in clinic so I think these are really good like just to help us with not straining our eyes so commonly so I would definitely be using one of these if I was taking out teeth <laughs> There is a couple of other little instruments that you will probably need in your dental kit if your vet is doing extractions. With extractions, often, depending on the deficit that's left behind, we'll need sutures. Needle holder, some scissors, and potentially a suture cutter. So say if the vet isn't happy with the sutures that they've placed, they're just a bit messy, or they're just not happy with how it's sitting, they might want to remove those sutures. This is another instrument that is going to make your life way easier when it's coming to those difficult mouths, you know, those squishy, small, tiny, huge mouths that are difficult to hold open, especially for a dental procedure. They're called a gingival retractor. They are often kind of referred to as a dental gag or a mouth gag as well. So how they work is you place them into the mouth. You want to place the upper canine into the top white groove and the lower canine into the lower white groove, making sure that this with the wire and the Bring is on the outside of the dog's mouth just gonna provide a soft compress to keep the dog or cat's mouth open with these ones so this small one I would use for a cat and this big one I would maybe use for like a medium-sized dog they do come in a bunch of sizes so definitely good to have like every size on hand depending on the patients that you see commonly I'd say the bulk of your dental procedures are going to be small to medium sized dogs. It's just the way that it is. They're prone to dental disease. But in saying that, it's always important to have instruments on hand that do cater to large breeds because large breed dentals will take a long time. The teeth surface is larger, the mouth is larger, flipping them over and you know getting them prepped takes a lot more time. So having equipment that's gonna make that procedure quicker and more efficient on hand and within reach is going to make your life way easier. The next instrument that you're gonna need in your dental procedures and they should be disposed after every use is a profi head. So you're gonna use your dental workstation to kind of function this. You're gonna use a bit of profi paste, place it onto the teeth and just kind of smooth away after scaling. You got ones like this, this little one with the purple head. This is what we call an oscillating profi head. So when it's motored, the cup doesn't completely do a 360. It only does a 60 degree turn and just kind of wishy washes back and forth around the tooth, which I think is really good. These are 
my actual favorite. The other version is a 360 degree rotating profi head. So these go round and round and round. So these come in a soft or a firm kind of cup. Let's say the soft would use be used for like a delicate mouth, maybe like a cat mouth, and the firm one might be used for like a larger breed. But this also comes down to your vet's preference as well. I will mention with these though, if you are polishing a dog's teeth, who or a dog or a cat that has long hair, make sure the fur, the hair is out of the way, just because it is rotating around. If it does grab a little bit of hair, that hair is going around with it. So just keep that in mind. And the last kind of final things that you should definitely have out ready for your dental is lots of swabs. The vets always use so many swabs. Um, your profi paste, make sure that you've got a veterinary grade profi paste ready and ready to be used. Make sure you put the lid on it as well because if you even leave it off a little bit, they do dry out and they won't work as effectively. And have your dental charting tool ready. So charting up the teeth before, during, and after the dental procedure. If you go down to the link in the description, you can go to a downloadable instrument guide that I've just gone over right now, and also a dental charting tool, which can be handy for study, or you can use it in clinic, wherever you would like, even if you're learning numbering of teeth, nice and handy to have on hand. Um, so that's in the link below. And here's your friendly reminder to autoclave your dental instruments. All of your instruments can be thrown in the older club. You can put them in a resealable bag. You can just put like this dental holder straight in onto the tray, but make sure that you are autoclaving them. At least at the end of the day, if not after every patient.